Hello, my name is Novio Rosa Chuma. I'm a writer originally from Zimbabwe, living in the USA. I recently moved to Boston about two weeks ago, and moving to a new city in the time of COVID is pretty hectic. Nobody wants to hang out, understandably. And so adjusting to the new normal um, under COVID. I'm originally from Zimbabwe. Um, my first uh, book is a collection of short stories called Shadows that was published in South Africa in 2013, where I was a student. Um, my second book is my debut novel called House of Stone. House of Stone was published by Norton in the USA last year in January 2019. And this is the paperback. It's a nice bright yellow color with that, you know, the stone jewel in the center. Um, and so it was published in January 2020, this paperback edition. Now, the title House of Stone stands for the country named Zimbabwe. So this is a book um, that looks broadly at the history of Zimbabwe from the time um, Zimbabwe was a British colony named Rhodesia in the 1970s right through to our independence in 1980 through to the present time of the novel, which is 2007. And it's related by this young man called Zamani. Zamani has been called a sociopath and a psychopath by many readers. He has, he has this ambition to um, rewrite his own history. He's not happy with the life that history has led and he's going to replace that history with a better one. So it's really a book about the act of imagining ourselves into our the spaces, our countries, our lives, um, especially post-colonial spaces that tend to exclude those who are deemed small people. So this is really a book about these small characters, what I call everyday people going about their lives in the midst of up upheaval, um, with the ambitions of love, um, the ambitions of revolution, the ambitions of belonging and parentage. Um, and so what inspired this book was growing up, we, we really didn't know much about our history. We actually don't know much about our history right now. And one of the most rewarding things about writing this book has been that um, Hearing from young Zimbabweans um, who have been inspired by reading this book to learn about Kukura Hundi, to ask their parents about our history. Zimbabwe is a country that does not like to look at its past. Now, one of the characters in this book called Black Jesus, a character who Zamani is obsessed with because Zamani believes Black Jesus is his father, is based on a real life character um, who was an army general and a minister, recently a minister in our military government in Zimbabwe, who died about a week ago and he died from COVID. COVID is quite the equalizer. It's uh, very interesting. So it's been a very interesting time in Zimbabwe as we revive also this history that has been hidden and continues to be hidden from us. Um, one of the biggest influences when writing this novel was Gunter Grass's epic novel, Tindrum. That book looks at the Holocaust, another difficult period in, uh, in history, in German's history. And what it does is it invents and reinvents and, and, reinvents and refreshes language. And I was really moved by that. Um, another book I read whilst writing this work was uh, the Zimbabwean writer Yvonne Vera Stone Virgins. It's got this poetic lushness. The Stone Virgins also deals with um, Zimbabwe scope around history. Um, and Vera has this almost unbearable poetry to it. And it's about the women and the war um, and trying to find language for those little pockets of experience that can be so shocking to the system as to evade language. Um, another work I enjoyed was The Talented Mr. Ripley um, by Patricia Highsmith. Um, Tom as a character is fascinating. He's devious, um, he's a psychopath, but we as readers are become implicit, right, in his desires, in his murderous um, tendencies as a way to move the story forward. Um, you know, um, I feel like I usually write um, but things that, that feel emotionally fraught to me. For me, writing is an investigation. There are things I don't really understand or that, I, that I've been thinking about that bother me, that feel too complex to just make sense of. And so I, I enjoy um, the discovery through experience of, you know, 
these various emotional states. You know, what is it to be human, right? Um, what is it to sit with discomfort? Um, some readers find my work uh, uncomfortable, but I think that's where the real work begins. Discovery, um, introspection, self-reflection. You know, I you know I don't really have any ultimate goal or takeaway that I wish the reader to you know imbibe. Having finished this book, um, this book has got multiple strands and storylines and characters, and what it is for me reading, what I love from reading, what I hope the reader will take from House of Stone is an experiential um, sort of journey. Um, you know, usually books about um, you know non-white, um, non-Western characters are usually used. Um, to try and understand another culture, another place. For me, this is a book about psychology, our consciousness. And for me, that is a human thing. And so my aim and hope is to implicate the reader, right? Um, implicate the reader in this experience of living, of being. Just one example of, you know, violence as a global phenomenon that we all experience in various degrees in, in our lives. Um, currently with, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, both of you are saying globally, I'm sure we are tuned to the ways in which violence is a social construct in all societies. So one thing I do wish to, to move away from and that I wish to move away in writing this book was the pathologizing of what we call African suffering and the, the honest exploration of humanity, um, wherever that humanity happens to take place. In this case, it takes place in Zimbabwe. Well, true or false, Oxford comma all the way, I'd say false. I like to play with language. I do not like to be restricted by um, English language's original ideas of what grammar should do, especially as a multilingual writer. I will always reach for a peanut butter M&M. &M. The book's currently on my nightstand, I knew you least must I go, which I'm enjoying uh, very much. It's an exquisite cadavers by Mina Kandasami. It's, it is a it is a it is a mind blowing book. The experience of reading that book is is unlike anything I've experienced in quite a long time. Um, I'm also reading Citizen by Claudia Rankin, which I'll be teaching this semester in my auto fiction workshop class. I do my best reading in the night, late at night, actually before I go to bed, around eleven p.m. midnight. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. Um, I hope you're all staying safe in the time of COVID and thanks, take care.